first of all, I um, I haven't had this uh, frame or machine, this, this long arm for very long. There's the regalia. We've got Pro Stitcher on, on a 12 foot kinetic frame. Um, I've, I received this the very, very end of July, kind of got it up and running the very, kind of roughly the end of the first week of August, so of this year. So I haven't had it very long. Um, but I, what I did find out is I, I do not get along well with pins. These little guys right here, these guys, lethal. Yeah, I can't tell you how many times I jabbed, poked, prodded, and injured myself with them. So I decided to try something new. So I decided to try the Red Snapper system, and I gotta tell you, I really, really like it. A quick peek at what it looks like uninstalled. So the first thing I do is I release my locks on my back bar. Um, with that, and that has my cloth leader wrapped around it. And I bring my cloth leader down all the way down to where you can see there's kind of this round ish piece in here. This is kind of what it looks like it's a little red tube looking thing, and it, and it goes through um, the very hemline of my leader cloths, which um, I did myself. I measured it up and then just kind of did a straight stitch on my sewing machine so that I could actually put this little guy in. Now you gotta make sure that you don't do it too tight or too loose. Um, mine's kind of right in between. It has a tendency of shifting just a hair from one end to the other. Um, it is a little bit longer on both sides. It's about a half an inch longer. I'm okay with that. But that's how I get that part started. I also have that in my um, front bar up here. Um, this is what a lot of people refer to, I guess, is the belly bar? I don't know, I can't figure it out. Anyway, so I've got them also in here. Now, because I'm gonna be loading a table runner, um, it's not as wide by any means as a um, just a standard quilt. Um, I'm not using my super, super long ones, which are, oh gosh, they're probably a good 36 inches long. They're quite long, they're pretty close anyway. Um, so I'm not going to use those. I'm going to use kind of a combination of, of these different ones. But what I typically do is I grab like four, uh, excuse me, four, two, four, six, because I need one for the front and one for the back. So let me grab a couple more here. There we go. So I usually grab a small handful of the little short two inch guys. And this is what I start with. And I usually um, do like three for the top and three for the bottom. And let me get the camera set up and we'll get over to the machine and get this on the frame. So I'm gonna try to stay out of the way as best I can, but this is this is kind of what I do. Um, so I take my backing fabric, and in this particular case, I've already folded it in half, and I've marked my middle section. And I'm hoping you can see that. So I took a little pin right there in my salvage. Um, and then what I do is I set it up here. I have a center mark already marked on my leader cloth. And I kind of just come in here and get it as close as I possibly can to that mark. Yeah, and it, it does get to be quite interesting. It can be a little bit of a juggling act, but I get that one clamped on. And then I just simply kind of scooch that all the way down to the end. And I don't know if you can see this, but I'm do that real quick so you can kind of see all the way over here I've clamped this one down and then what I'll do is I will I'll I'll get more clamps on here in the center in just a minute or two so now I'm gonna go back over to this side and try to stay out of the way as best I can and again I typically take the salvage edge on one side or the other and then I try to get that lined up with the very top of my fold right there so it just kind of makes it a little bit more even so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna kind of try to fold my batting up and out of the way a little bit more here just makes it easier to clamp this in I'm gonna make sure 
that I am in between my blue track and my front rail. And then you just simply start, and this is nice because I can push it down right here. But the neat thing about these, let's see if I can push this out of the way, is that if it's too tight, which a lot of the new ones really are, you bend them up, it helps open up the track a little bit, and then you just seat them down. And poof, ugh, I got a little bit of batting cut in that one. There we go, so there's that. Um, so there's that part, and then I've got one other little section to go. Perfect. Okay, so there's that. So hopefully you can see this, but um, again, I've got the blue track that the Pro Stitcher base rides upon. This is part of that gearing track so that the machine can do the robotics that it does. And then I have my front rails right here that the carriage slides on. When I'm putting these together, I am sitting in between these two parts right here and using the leverage on this. Part of it is because it's easier for me to do that than it is for me to try to get behind my machine sometimes. Um, I don't have a lot of space. Um, but the other part is, is, you know, this is the regalia, the baby lock regalia is a 20 inch machine. So this is a, a doable distance for me. Um, so now that we've got that attached on the top or excuse me, on the back part, we make sure that our leader cloth is going behind our idler rail and down. And then we have to do the same thing to our front. Okay. So now you can see my front rail where I've got my table runner attached to the uh, attached to the back leader cloth with the red snappers. Here's my idler rail and here's my back rail. What I'm gonna do here is again, I mark this with the halfway mark, which is right, set, right there. Oops, and I'm gonna get in here and I'm gonna set this up so that my rail, I keep saying that, not working, um, has the red snapper right on top here. And here's the, here's the part that you really always want to remember when you're using these, is you never push down on your rail. You always support it and then you push kind of between the two. So I've got that started right there. Now I'm going to come over So I'm going to set another quick um, little two inch piece on this end. I'm going to do the same on this end. There you go. And then I'll fill it in with the longer pieces. So we'll start here and see how I'm not pushing down on my rail. I'm kind of just using my grip to grip them together. You can definitely feel them and you can also hear them when they click in. I'm going to get a smaller piece to fit in there. There we go. And then I'm going to go down and do the other end. So we'll finish this up right here. Oop, this one, I don't know if this one's been used yet. Some of them I have that have, they have not been used quite yet. And again, I'm trying to pull my batting out because that makes it really, really hard to get those in there. Oh, I'm having a tough time with this one. There we go. There we go. And then one more short one. Finish this one in here. And there we have it. So now that we have the red snappers holding the quilt top, or the, excuse me, the table runner onto our frame, we need to tighten this up a bit. So I'm gonna come over here, I'm gonna hit my top, or excuse me, my top bar, my back bar. I wanna make sure my lock is down. And then I'm gonna come in here and just start to get this a little cranked up here. So it's gonna get a little funky because it sits funny underneath the machine just a bit. And there we go. I'm also going to come in and I'm going to release my front bar lock right here 
and I'm gonna let some of that go. Um, I need that to be a little bit more towards the back than the front. I'm gonna hit my lock on that, and then I'm gonna hit my take up on the back again to where that, where you can almost see right here, my red snappers are gonna be right at the bottom of that um, idler bar. And then it also leaves me enough room in the front here for my table to go underneath. This table runner is a little bit wider than a number of the other table runners that I've been working on. Um, and the throat space on the regalia is a 20 inch throat space. So I wanna make sure that I can actually get this to fit in here. So I measured and it is 17 inches from the very end to the very trunk. And what I want to do is I want to make sure that before I hit my back bar, so you can see right here, before I bump into that, um, I can come in and I've got at least a quarter of an inch. And I make sure that I can do that roughly all the way down without running into any problems. And it looks like I can. Now the same thing goes for the front. So I'm going to come down here and I've got plenty of room here for it to roll all the way through and you can see I'm probably about a half inch up but I've still got more room so this will fit so I can I can actually quilt within a 17 inch frame next step is to get everything booted up and ready to go and to pick my design and see what we're going to come up with so there's the table runner all ready to go I'm going to get everything all booted up and then we'll go through the selection the the selecting the area and then selecting the design and then letting her go. Okay, so the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to I'm going to select my area in Pro Stitcher. Okay, so the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to go over to my area tab. I'm going to come in here and now I am ready to actually go in and select my area. So I'm going to select my first point and then I'm just going to follow that all the way down to the end of my table runner. And I'm about a quarter of an inch down, oops, sorry about that, quarter inch down from the top and quarter inch from the side. I'm going to select my second point. Now I'm going to come all the way down to the front again, about a quarter of an inch, quarter of an inch. This is, and now I'm going to go all the way back over and I'm going to select again, about a quarter of an inch. Okay, so now that I've got my area selected, I'm going to center it in my space here. And now I'm going to go up to File. I want to find a design that I can actually put in here. So I'm going to go to Design. And I'm going to say Open. So one of the designs that I have in my mind is actually on my D drive, which is the thumb drive that I have in the back. Those are the, those are the designs that I can download from um, different design websites um, and in this particular case I got one from Sweet Dream Studios and let's see if I can find it here. Hmm. Uh, maybe that's it. I think it's this one. Let me take a peek. Yep that's the one. So they're kind of like you know a little bit wonky Christmas tree looking guys. And so that's what I want to do here. I do want it to be just a hair bigger. Um, and I could change the size here, but it doesn't necessarily keep it uh, locked so that the width and the height change at the same time to keep it equal. So a lot of times what I'll do is I'll go to modify, resize, and hit my lock button. And now I can change my height and I want to just go up a little bit more. And it should see how the, the whole thing changes at the same time. That looks perfect to me. 
I need to scooch it in just a bit, but actually maybe not. And now I need to hit my repeat because I want this to fill in all the way across. So I'm gonna do that and one more. It's a little much, that's okay. Here's the question. If I go back and I do the two and I tell it to stretch, does it look off? Maybe, maybe not. Um, let's take a look. So here's it not stretched. They're a little chunky and together. And here it is stretched. This is a wonky tree table runner. So I think the wonky tree design, quilting design, will work great with this. I just want something that fills the background and, and just kind of holds everything down. So I'm gonna get this one all set up and we're gonna get rolling with it. Okay, to get started, I make sure that I'm in Pro Stitcher by selecting the Pro Stitcher tab on the top. Um, I make sure that I have a start and an end point, just one, because I am doing a, an edge to edge essentially of this particular pattern. So I've got one green start point and one red stop point. Um, while I'm in Pro Stitcher, I make sure that the gears are engaged. I do that at the very, very beginning, but I also just make sure that they are again here. In my case, the gears are orange. Um, I press the quilt button, which is on the top. If you do not press the quilt button, if it's on something entirely different, whatever it might be, your run button will be grayed out. So you need to make sure that you're in your quilt button across the top there. Um, and then what I usually do is I, I, I set myself up so I start, I move my machine to really close to that starting point. And at that point, I go in um, and I hit my run button. It's gonna say make sure your needle is up. We've got everything all set. I've got my machine set to 11 stitches per inch. I think that's gonna look great on this. And we're gonna hit proceed. Pull up my bottom thread. And we're going. We only have a tiny bit left to go. Here it is, completely quilted, and the next step is to take it off the frame, and that's even easier than putting it on. Um, especially with the red snappers. So the first thing that I do is I release my, my, my rail locks, both my front and my back, um, just so that I can actually pop in here and take the clamps and everything off. And so what I'm gonna do is just come in here and you just lightly pull up, kind of see how easy that is. Here's this one, we'll pull this one up. There we go. It's a little hard to hand hold and do this at the same time. So I'm gonna finish doing this at the front and then I'm gonna do the back. And now that the quilt is hanging down here, um, the reason I undo the back one is so I can roll it down so I can access it easier. Otherwise, it can be a little bit of a reach. And again, I just start popping these little guys off. It's that simple. Oh my gosh, I cannot believe I did this. In the process of editing this video for y'all, I realized that I did not take any final pictures of the wonky tree table runners, and I made three of them. Can't show you the final product. I'm so sorry. 
Anyway, I hope you enjoy this video. I'm going to have the link to the, um, the pattern, which was designed by, um, uh, excuse me, Carla Alexander, and it's called the Crazy Christmas Trees. It is a super, super cute pattern. Check it out. And I hope you enjoy this video. Thanks for watching.